Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you're here to join me. Today, it is an ENFJ's take on extroverted feeling, which I think is an oft misunderstood function. Even by myself, I until I came across personality typing, I didn't even realize I was doing it. And they do say your first function is the one you're kind of swimming in. It's the water you're swimming in unconsciously, but it's also the one that's holding you back a lot of times that you're so comfortable with, you sort of go to it in a default setting and you don't realize you need to work other muscles because they're sort of atrophying while this one's just getting, <laughs> it's like it's on steroids. It's, it's annoyingly, grossly huge. And so, yeah, that's what I've learned on my self-help, self-growth journey. And I hope that tidbit can help you too. That once you figure out your personality type and you figure out that first function and you're like, yay, I'm awesome at this, then you gotta go, mm, but I'll see you later. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'll get to that in a second. But I want to explain extroverted feeling really quickly for those who aren't familiar. It's one of the eight uh, cognitive functions by Carl Jung, the brilliant psychologist. Um, father of analytical psychology. I need to read, I've, I've researched so much about him. I want to read, actually read one of his books. So that is one of my goals this year and, and sometime soon is to actually delve into the, the mind of a genius. But extroverted function or extroverted function, extroverted feeling as I understand it is the mothering function. It is uh, very much concerned about harmony and making sure everybody's okay, usually before oneself. It's tribe above self. That's the main takeaway. And so with that being said, something that I learned <laughs> recently is that in order to grow, I have to starve that. I have to starve the need to seek validation from the outside world, the tribe. And I have to do my own thing. I have to figure out why am I doing what I'm doing Wow, what are my values? Because this whole time I've been kind of riding the coattails of everyone else as far as what do you want? What do you need? Let's make that happen. Now it's like, okay, in order for me to become my best self, I have to override that and go a little lower on the function stack to things like introverted thinking and introverted feeling. Um, so that being said, extroverted feeling, what is it? What is it like? Um, and I'm sure everybody experiences it differently. So this, take this with a grain of salt, please. This is just the Rebecca Pebble experience of E, um, F E. Um, for me, I guess ever since I can remember, I've always often sort of intuit others' needs and when I'm in a room, I'm constantly hyper aware of how people are feeling, um, what they're doing, what they might need, but mostly how they're feeling. And I can sense if I wanna bring someone into a conversation, if I think they might feel left out. So for example, the other day I was, at, I was filming, and I'll have an episode about some of that, uh, some of my, my parodies I'm in, in a future films, or future film, future film, future video, so stay tuned for that. But I was having a conversation with another actor, but I noticed there was a third actor that was kind of not really a part of the conversation. And so what I try to do instinctively, and I'll notice some people don't do this, is to bring that person in. I'll make eye contact, I'll sort of, I'll ask them a question, I'll try to relate it back to something that I think would interest them so that we can all be involved in the conversation and nobody's left out. Which is, I mean, it's a wonderful thing, but, um, I mean, that part of it's wonderful. But there are, there are definitely some downsides to having FE first and working it as a muscle too hard at your mental gym, you know what I mean? Um, I know some people think Effie can be annoying or over the top or fake, that's a big one because it's kind of like your stereotypical cheerleader uh, function is what I think of it as, like yeah, you know, we're always cheering people on and wanting the best for them and expressing it without abandon almost. 
which can be annoying. I mean, I honestly, I've seen FE users before. I'm like, oh my gosh, that is, that's over the top. And I know I've been that way too. But I also know why they're coming from that place. Um, for me, the reason I so openly express myself like with my facial expressions and then the inflection of my voice i know a lot of times extroverted feeling types are sort of sing-songy if you notice in their cadence of their speech uh we're trying to keep people engaged and interested um and harmony is such a big thing for me i just i can't stand conflict or disagreement. I mean, I know it happens and I know it's going to happen. But for me, it's sort of like, well, if there's a disagreement, I think there's a diplomatic, mature, responsible way to handle it that doesn't have to get to a nasty, a disrespectful place. And so I'm constantly, when I'm in social situations, if it's at work or um, with friends or family, I'm sort of really intently picking up on the cues of verbal and nonverbal body language even is a huge one because that, that even says more than verbal ever could. Um, I'm, I'm hyper, oh my gosh, I just realized this whole time I'm filming with the microphone box. <laughs> wow, I don't know if I'll edit this out or not. We'll see, hey, you know what? If I don't, you know, imperfections can be fun, right? So anyway, where was I? I lost my train of thought. So yes, it can seem fake. This is the bad part about filming when you're an extrovert. You, I almost need someone to keep me on track. They'll be like, oh, Rebecca, you said this. I go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if it's just me, <laughs> what kind of, sometimes we're, I'm in trouble. I'm stuck in the mud. Um, it can seem fake because we're trying so hard to almost, ooh, this is going to sound really out there, guys, but we're almost wielders of the group's vibration, kind of like this is sort of getting Harry Potter-esque, uh, and we sort of want to, in a good, we have good intentions, so this sounds almost manipulative. We want to make sure that the vibrations of the group and that everyone in the group maintain a certain level, that everyone's feeling good. Um, so we can do that in a variety of ways, but mainly it is knowing everyone to such a depth or to such a degree that we can sense usually what you want, what you, what you need, um, which sometimes it does, it sounds very manipulative. I'm not going to lie to you there. Uh, because sometimes I'm thinking, well, if I'm, I'm I know what people want to hear. Um, but that's the thing. That's where the self growth comes in is you have to be true to yourself. And if you realize you're just saying something just to make someone feel good, but you don't really mean it, or you, you have reasons why you shouldn't say it. That's where the mature ENFJ, ESFJ come in, where they want, you know, they won't feel the need to jump in. And I find the older I get, the more I'm sitting back. And I used that's I started thinking maybe I'm an introvert because the older I get, the less I sort of spring myself into a situation or into a conversation and feel like I have to fix things or I have I have to I have to make people happy. Um, it's not my job. It's not my business. Um, and yes, sometimes there are situations where it's nice to help others and be there and sort of do the whole being like a gracious host or a benevolent figure, or diplomat. It's wonderful. I, it's served me well and I'm very thankful that it's my top function. However, I also have realized it has burned me as being my top function. So like I said, um, it... I'm, I'm currently starving it so that I can work on other things, which has helped me grow leaps and bounds. So that I highly recommend for any of you, no matter your type. Um, but yeah, I guess my main thing that I want people to take away is 
not to see Epi as fake. Um, I think that's the biggest thing I, I fear that people might perceive it as because every function has kind of a light side and a dark side in a way it's perceived in a good way in a way that it's misperceived or could be. Um, and sure, I'm sure there are plenty of Epi users that just like any other user that aren't genuine and forthcoming. Um, but with discernment, you know, you know, um, if someone is really warm and engaging and they're in, they're genuinely interested in you and they're trying to help you because it's coming from this place of love. I think as an ENFJ and even like an INFJ, we so deeply care about people and we're, um, I would say we're, and ESFJs are, we're people people. We're so almost like people pleasers. I've always been a people pleaser, um, which I'm working on that our heart bleeds for humanity and for people. We want them to be happy. We want them to live well and kind of do whatever it takes. And a lot of times it's where you kind of get that martyr syndrome of an FE user that they'll put themselves, they'll sacrifice themselves for others because it's almost like I would rather you be happy and I don't get what I want or need because that'll be, that will be okay. And some, I mean, sometimes it's not, but you kind of figure you'll swallow that pride um, so that others can be happy. But what FE users need to realize and ENFJs, ESFJs, and, um, and others that have it lower down in the function stack, ISFJs, INFJs, um, can take away is that you matter too. You're a part of humanity. And that's what, it took me so long to realize I, I'm important too. I'm one of these people. I love people, but I'm I'm also one of them. I think that's why I harp on the self love thing, not that because it's cool and it's sort of uh, in the lexicon and the current sort of culture right now. As as um, in society, it's really it's it's amazing. We're seeing it a lot more, or at least I'm seeing a lot more. But of course, I scour the internet for self growth stuff, so naturally that's what I would find. But I think I harp on that a lot because as an FE user, that is so foreign to me. I I feel like I'm finally, with this YouTube channel especially, it's helping figure out even what that is. I never heard of it. I didn't know, I even have the biggest concept of it. So that to me is tapping into, like I said, the F. I, introverted feeling, introverted thinking, sort of what are my reasons, what are my values, digging into that part of yourself. Yeah, and that is powerful because then once your function stack is pretty balanced, like all eight of the functions are pretty solid, which it's hard and it takes time and it takes work because those muscles down here, I'm looking at like the last four and, um, all these lower ones are usually so neglected that it's like plants that you just let die and you're finally like oh I guess I need to tend to you now and give you water and sunshine and <sighs> you breathe them back to life and then the other ones you kind of have to just say you know what we've we I've helped you plenty you're doing good I think I can pause and work on these um, and then when you're a well-rounded balanced individual that's powerful that's really powerful so I guess my takeaway is if the users care very much about you and the world and humanity and that's why they're trying to move your emotions and to bring harmony into the world I hope I'm not forgetting anything and if I am I'll make a part two video I guess and that no matter your type work on your weaknesses research and, and I'll put different videos out with different functions and sort of how they work and stuff so you can get some info here too but there's so much on the internet about the different functions and what they are and once you know your type and you can figure out oh, okay I need to work on those the lower functions and I don't need to keep rehashing the higher stuff that I'm good at I think you'll find yourself growing in leaps and bounds 
So please, if you have any questions about extroverted feeling or being an ENFJ or any of it, really, please comment below. I'd love to talk to you guys. Um, it's weird trying to analyze something that feels so natural to me. I'm sure for like an INFP, if you have to think about your introverted feeling, you're probably like, I don't know, I just really love certain things. And, and it, how do you explain that? You just, it's just the way you are, the way you is, the way, the way we were made. So <laughs> yeah. So thank you guys again for joining me. This one was, I feel like a little lengthier than normal, but that's okay. I don't have a set, I don't have a set time, but I think you all are wonderful, beautiful human beings and just Keep being awesome and remember, stay weird, my friends. Bye. It's where you are.